Hello, welcome to lesson 37 attributes brought to you by Ankro Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn the attributes and also the two types of attributes. Okay, what is an attribute first of all? An attribute is a declarative tag that is used to convey information to runtime, not at the compile time. Keep in mind at the runtime to tell about the behaviors of various elements like classes, methods, structures, assemblies, etc. in our program. To be in simple, attribute is like a mediator which tells you, which conveys the information uh, about the various behaviors of elements like classes, methods, structures, enums, assemblies, etc. at the runtime. Okay. Now here you can observe the syntax for specifying an attribute. You can observe here the square brackets and common brackets. This attribute, this key, instead of this keyword, here we'll specify this attribute name. And it takes two parameters, that is positional parameters and the name parameter. But keep in mind, positional parameters are key information to the attributes. And this is essential essential parameter. Must and should, you should, you should specify this positional, positional parameter. But uh, coming to name parameter, it's optional. Okay, and this is what about the syntax of an attribute and also we saw the definition of an attribute. Okay, types of attributes. The .NET framework provides two types of attributes. They are predefined attributes and the custom built attributes. Below are the list of few predefined attributes in the .NET framework. The attribute usage, conditional, obsolete, web methods, serializable, etc. These are the free few predefined attributes within the .NET framework. In this session, we are going to see the obsolete attribute, how it works. To, without wasting time, we'll jump into Visual Studio and we'll start coding and we'll see how to how, how do we use the obsolete keyword. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll write a piece of code which will add which will take two parameters and it'll add the numbers. I'm going to create a method. Int and this add method is going to take two parameters like int num1 comma int num2 sorry this is the spelling mistake okay and this is the method okay and I have to return this return num1 plus num2 okay my method is ready what is this method is going to do its method is going to add two numbers and it is going to return to the it is going to return where the method is going to be called this method is going to be called so in order to call this method here I have to in order to call this add method in the main method I have to make it static now what I'll do I'll just call this method so I'll use this add method and this is going to take two parameters I'll pass 10 comma 20 and this works fine okay now when I go and build this program you can observe it successfully prints 30 on the console screen yep and this is done but if user try to enter the three numbers and my method is not going to handle that why because it's taking only two parameters if I want to handle three numbers what I have to do it's very simple I have to copy this method and I have to add another parameter here which will take three numbers I'll name it as num3 okay and I have to add it here when I'm returning I have to add that variable okay now it's common now we'll come here and now we can observe my add method is having two variations in it one it will take two parameters and other it will take three ma three parameters as of now I want to pass three parameters so this is what now when I run this program you can observe I'll get 30 as well as 60 on the console screen this is what the output we expected but uh, keep in mind if user want to wants to enter wants to add uh, 20 numbers and at that point of time uh, we should not write our piece of code in this format uh, we should not write the multiple add methods which will take that number of parameters instead of that uh, we should write a piece of code uh, which will use logic to add n number of numbers how to do that it's very simple as of now I'll just remove this method now I'm going to write a piece of logic which which will be which will be capable of handling n number of numbers to add. How to how to write that logic in a method? Now what I'll do I'll just uh, create a method. I'll make it a static first because I'm going to call this method in the main method, and and this add method is going to take parameters as list of integers. Okay, and uh, list name is collection variable is numbers 
coming back okay i'll use for each loop to for each loop to iterate through that list and my return type is integer and the variable name i'll take it as like num and the collection is numbers okay now what i have to do i have to initialize a variable called sum i'll assign the value to it 0 i initialize to 0 and here what i have to do is i have to use like sum is equal to sum plus num okay now this works fine and i have to return this value return the value to the method where it is calling i have to return sum okay fine this works now now what i'll do is instead of uh, doing like this instead of uh, I'll create another method console.write line then I'll take add method and here you can observe our add method is having two variations one it will take two parameters another one it will take a list of numbers now I'm going to pass a list of integers now I'll pass like 10 comma 20 30 40 50 and this works fine okay now when I go and run this program you can observe the output is as expected 30 as well as 150 on the console screen now we call this method as the logic enabled method it means that this method is going to add n number of numbers if whatever the user is going to enter but this method it's not able to do that why because it's taking only two parameters and its capacity is only to add two numbers but this method can have can add n number of methods n number of numbers sorry and this is what this is what the method is called logic enabled method now what I will do is I'll come back here and right now what we'll see is we'll we'll see the usage of the obsolete attribute now what I'll do is now if my old user is old user is using this method now I've written a new new logic to that but how to convey information to the old user that there exists a new method to do that work at this point of time attributes plays an important role to convey the information to the user telling that a new method exists to do this piece of work then how to convey the information to the user it, in this piece of time attributes plays an important role so what I'll do is I'll show you how to use an attribute absolute attribute we have to we have to specify the absolute attribute for the method which we are not going which we are not going to use it so here obsolete the general meaning of obsolete is outdated means we are not going to use it anymore so obsolete take two three it has three variations one is the default obsolete and the second one is it will take string as a message and third it will take the error key error parameter also but as of now I'll go with the string what I have to tell you is whenever user try to access this method use this method I have to tell him that a new method exists okay which is logic enabled use use the use this method instead of using the old one how to, to convey the information to the user you have to convey the information to the user by specifying this absolute attribute on the old method so here I have to pass a string the string is something like I have to convey the information telling him that mm, like uh, I have to I'll copy this and I'll tell control V I'll tell like int dot int add list of numbers a new method exist please use this please use this one please use this method now now as soon as I added this absolute with the param with the string message you can observe I got a warning message on the add method which I'm calling in the main main method so it is telling that it is telling that you can observe program add it is taking two variables is obsolete means this method is outdated so what it is telling it's also conveying the information telling that a method called int add list of integer numbers a new method exists please use this method so it's telling that it is saying that instead of using the old one just go with the new one and try it so who is conveying this type of information this type of information is conveyed by the attributes and ex explicitly here the attribute what we are using is absolute its work is to convey the information okay and to understand it very clearly we'll jump back into presentation 
okay absolute attribute it's a predefined attribute which marks a program entity that should not be used that's what we did here we are telling the user not to use the traditional add method which will take two parameters instead of that use the add method which will take n number of numbers that is list okay it enables you to inform the compiler to discard a particular target element yes i'm telling you i'm telling to the compiler discard this add method which will take two parameters okay now for example when a new method is being used in a class and if you want to still retain the old method in the class you may mark it as absolute by displaying a message the new method should be used instead of the old method that's what we did here here i'm conveying the information to the user telling that a method called int add list of numbers exist please use that method instead of using this traditional old one that's what we did it here okay and here you can observe the syntax for absolute absolute as of now we pass the message the parameter message is a string describing the reason why the item is absolute and what to use instead that's what we just pass a string here absolute is also having the third is also other having the other variation which will take the bo boolean value that is boolean value error okay now what i'll do is now when i build this project it builds fine but it will give me a warning it will give me a warning telling that it is absolute but if i want this this message to print it in an error manner how do i do it i'll go and specify like true yes i'm telling this absolute to print to tell this method is an outdated in this in the form of in the form of error message so i'm telling here it is telling that it's absolute please don't use this method use the new one so when i build this project you can observe i'll get an error telling that that this method is absolute go and use the new method which is existing now okay if you if you want to specify that uh, this absolute message in the form of error then go and pass the second parameter and make it as true okay this is what about this is what about the absolute attribute and it comes into existence when you marks it when you want to mark a program entity that should not be used that's what we did here we do we did not want the user to use the old method but we do want the user to use the new one which is logically very good enabled so we use the absolute attribute and told him that don't use this method and use the new one that is where the absolute attributes plays its role and coming back to presentation here you can observe there are few free defined attributes within the dotnet framework what are these few free defined attributes it's very simple okay um in the la we learned about the absolute absolute attribute right now we'll learn what is attribute usage see attribute usage describes how a custom attribute class can be used for example uh, you are having a custom attribute class and using this attribute usage we can specify how that class can be used that is custom attribute can class can be used by specifying the parameters and coming to conditional conditional attribute marks a method as conditional whose execution depends on a specified preprocessing identifier okay uh, it's like specifying the condition to a class on this condition you have to execute or not that is what the conditional attribute and absolute as we saw now and coming to the web method okay uh if you are an asp.net programmer we are building web applications and if you are working with the web services and as a part of that web services you want to expose a method as a web service method then you have to decorate that web method with an attribute called web method attribute okay this is what the web method attribute tells you and the final one is serializable uh if you are developing an remoting remote remote based application or a wcf application uh, where the objects will be crossing application domain boundaries and those objects needs to be serialized and one of the way of serializing a class is to make your use of this serialize attribute to be in simple if you want to make your class uh, i serialize see, make your class a serialized one then go and use the serial attribute this is what the, the the list of few def defined predefined attributes mentioned here and we saw the meaning of them also but in this session what we learned is we learned how to make your method obsolete using the absolute attribute that's for that's for the day and thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to ampro training below